Okay, hello. So I'm talking really quietly because my roommate and partner are sleeping. And so I hope you can still hear this. But today I'm going to be talking to you about how to use the Digital Shoreline Analysis System or DSAS version 6. And it's created by the USGS. And here's the main interface. So uh, they have a lot of great documentation. I would highly recommend checking out this website. If you just do a quick Google search, you can see the digital uh, shoreline analysis system page and uh, they just updated to version six. And so they don't have an up-to-date user guide yet, but we're basing this off of the previous version, version 5.1. And some of it was similar, but you know, uh, some of it wasn't because the main difference here is that there's no integration with ArcMap. And that's because Esri is moving away from ArcMap and they're going to be focusing on ArcPro. And so this is a standalone software. And so you can download it here. And this is where I got the sample data that we're going to be seeing today. And yeah, once you have it downloaded on your computer, uh, this links to the user guide, which we'll be referencing. Here it is. And if you want any more information on like certain parameters that we choose, or you want to just dive deep into different uses than what we talk about today, I highly recommend looking through this. Like I said, it's a bit different in terms of the screenshots that they have because we're no longer in arc map, but rather it's a standalone software, so a lot looks different. Okay, so this is the DSAS interface, and I just recommend taking the tour really quick just so that you can see, you know, what's new. So here, this is the settings. This is where we link to our data folders. And this is through the data library. And then in that data library, just to specify, you'll only be able to see what is called the GeoJSON is what I call it. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but yeah, only those files will show up. And so we'll get to that later. You can add different layers, ignore all these files. This is my samples that I was testing out before I recorded this. But this is where you add your layer. And so this is where you add your baseline, which I'll describe in a little bit, and you'll add your uh, shorelines. These are just your controls, visibility, information, the attributes, and all that. This brings you to your location of your data. This is something you can click to get help or more info. And then we're going to be using the cast transects tool as well as the calculate rates tool. Okay, so here is just a brief overview of what we're going to be doing today. So like I said, we are going to be generating a baseline to import into this interface as well as some shorelines that are fake but we're going to use them. We're also going to take a look at the sample data that has a real baseline and real shorelines that they provided, the USGS provided to us. So what we're going to be doing today is just a little bit of a backwards workaround. So we're first going to start off in the interface, and I'm going to show you what the final product should look like. And then we're going to jump into how you make the final products or how you make excuse me, how you make the input layers to then generate the final products. Okay, so <clears throat> this is just our workflow. So from start to finish, uh, we will, this is in a different order than I just mentioned, but we, how it typically would go is you would prepare your input data. So this is verifying that you meet all the requirements. All the requirements are listed in that handy user guide that the USG has prepared and they match 
what you need to have your attributes as for your baseline and shore lines in version 6, the same as version 5.1. So check out those. I also have those in my own notes I prepared, uh, and I'll send those that your way. And then um, you are going to make sure that your layers that you create in ArcGIS Pro are in the proper file format, which is this GeoJSON. And you're gonna create in ArcGIS Pro, you're actually gonna digitize on your imagery, your baseline shorelines, and that's when you convert it to the GeoJSON. So I won't go too much farther here because um, cast transects and calculate rates are what you're gonna do in this interface. All that preliminary stuff that we just talked about goes on an ArcGIS Pro. And I know that may seem confusing. I was just trying to give an overview, but hopefully it will make more sense once we get into it. Okay, so here we are. Now we need to locate the sample data. So like I mentioned before, we're going to look at what the GeoJSON files look like. So these are already pre-prepared by the USGS. It's just a sample for us to kind of mess around in this and get familiar with this software. And so to do that, we're going to link to our settings to link to a file folder. And so I have mine stored in my downloads in the sample data DSAS folder. So that's already linked. Here, remove these. And then I'm going to add that data. Here it is popped up in the file. And I, you can see that I've already created some tests, but these were the samples. So we're going to specify the use of the offshore baseline and then the shorelines. Okay. So they pop up over here and you can see there's some errors. And so it's just asking you to make sure your attributes are all set. So the date field is date and the uncertainty field is uncertainty. You can find out more information about these here. The default uncertainty is 10. Baseline ID is just ID. It's an offshore baseline like we talked about. And the baseline flow direction, we zoom to our layer. So we're in Florida. And so we can see the flow direction are these arrows. And then our shorelines here are these teal lines. And this is our baseline. And so to talk about this a little bit is our baseline needs to be a set distance offshore so that it's not intersecting these shorelines. And you want to have it parallel to your shoreline. And this is just so that the transects draw properly. And then now that we have our data in here, we want to cast the transects. And so this is just another test. But you specify your baseline layer, your shoreline layer, your spacing and the length. So this is how long the line is going to extend from your baseline to intersect all of your shorelines. So you need to make sure that width is appropriate or that length is appropriate. In terms of smoothing distance, so smoothing distance basically is this parameter and it's specific to your study site. And so this is directly from the user handbook, but you want to choose an appropriate distance. So for this project, I chose 250. And this is just so that your transects draw appropriately if you have a really curvy coastline. We're going to clip the transects 
you want to add your metadata. This is important. So just fill all this in about yourself and what you're going to be doing with this data. I'm not going to do it here because it's a test. Okay, so here we go. This is what the transects look like. You can see they're spaced 50 meters apart and we have them extending to all of our shorelines, which is really nice, it worked well. And there's none that are overlapping around these curves, which is important. There's some that get really close, but they're not overlapping. Okay, so now that we're there, we've got our transects. We wanna calculate the rate of change between these shorelines. So each line here is a different date, and it doesn't seem like that because they're not different colors, but in the metadata, they are different years that were digitized based on aerial imagery, it's assumed. And so each one represents a different shoreline position at a different time. And so we want to calculate the rate of change of those shorelines. And so we have our baseline layer, our shoreline, our transects that we just generated. We want to make sure that they go through all our transects. So put or I'm sorry, go the transects go through all the shorelines. So make sure you put the number of shorelines that you have. And we want to display the calculations and then take a peek in here. You want to make sure that you pick your statistic appropriately. And so I mean, my preference is to know most of these, if not all, but we're just going to use one is an example today. So endpoint rate, the distance between the oldest and newest shoreline divided by the number of elapsed years. And I want 95% confidence that this is good. And I want that summary report to see what's going on. So then you calculate. You can see your layer has been added to the project. in a moment. Okay, so this is our data. So red is erosion, and then yellow is pretty much no change or neutral between a quarter of a meter to a quarter of a meter plus or minus. And then blue is deposition on these shorelines. And so you can physically see transects where erosion is occurring, deposition is occurring, and not much change is occurring, which is really valuable. So that's one of the outputs. And so these are the types of end products that we want to see. And so this type of data would be a result that would be provided. And then that summary report is also a result that can be used for analysis. So those two main things are very useful and uh, should be looked at and delivered. All right. So now that... We have those finished up. I'll just show you what the summary looks like.
this is just an example, but you can see it gives you a lot of information, the dates of the transects, the threshold of the number of transects we wanted to see, the percent confidence interval we chose, the uncertainty we had, the transect spacing, the smoothing, the coordinate system, all that. And so it gives you statistics of your transects that you have that we saw. And so these are really good because we can see that, okay, about 71% of these were accreting, whereas about a quarter of them were eroding. And so that's the end of this video. This is, like I said, the end product, but I'm going to show you how we can create those GeoJSON files that you need to get these transected and to get your results.